Women's Equality Day. Happy Women's Equality Day! Happy Women's Equality Day! Happy Women's Equality Day. I'm Pam Meelam, president of Monumental Women, the all-volunteer not-for-profit group that broke the bronze ceiling in Central Park to create the first statue of real women in the 167-year history of that park. I'd like to welcome you to our virtual celebration. As you know, two years ago on August 26, 2020, the 100th anniversary of the ratification and the certification of the 19th Votes for Women Amendment to the Constitution, Monumental Women unveiled our Women's Rights Pioneers Monument. Since that time, we have been busy developing free programs and projects to advance the knowledge of and the appreciation for women's history. We've created a toolkit for change, to help communities across the nation reimagine their public spaces to add more tributes to the diverse women who help make this nation great. We created a Talking Statues app so people could hear in English and in Spanish information about women's rights leaders and the fight for women's suffrage. And we created an art and history program for young people called Put Her on a Pedestal. Last year on Women's Equality Day, we presented our five borough New York City Women's Rights History Trail. And today we are proud to announce, in partnership with the Girl Scouts of Greater New York, a new Celebrate Women's History patch. This year we will also announce the winners of the Moving History Forward Awards decided by the Monumental Women Board of Directors. There's a lot to celebrate but also much more work to do. As we all know, women's rights are always under attack. 2022 has become a year where the rights of women have not only been opposed, but obliterated by a right-wing radical Supreme Court whose members were only too happy to rule that women of this country no longer had legal control of their own bodies. It's a nightmare situation combined with an ongoing threat to our very democracy. So what do we do? We do what women all through history have done. We support each other and we fight back. So let's use our voting power like never before. And let's remember the brave women who won that right for us on Women's Equality Day and every day. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy our celebration video. The Girl Scouts of Greater New York and Monumental Women are proud to come together once more to bring the Celebrate Women's History patch, uh, which will be launched on August 26th, Women's Equality Day. The patch is an opportunity for Girl Scouts to learn about the history of women's suffrage in Greater New York as well as the space and the tools to advocate for the elevation of women and activists into the public space. To receive the patch, Girl Scouts will have to accomplish a number of activities, such as advocating for policy, educating others, and creating their own map of trailblazers in New York. The patch program is not only an opportunity to elevate the accomplishments of women in New York, but is also an opportunity to impact the 30,000 Girl Scouts in New York City that they too can make a lasting impact on history. Hello, I'm Namita Luthra, Vice President of Operations at Monumental Women. We are thrilled to partner with the Girl Scouts of Greater New York to launch the brand new Celebrate Women's History Patch. With its series of activities, the patch will encourage Scouts to learn about women's accomplishments, contributions, challenges, defeats, and triumphs. By earning the patch, Scouts will understand how movements for equality, justice, and liberty form and how they succeed. Knowing women's history is like having a personal treasure trove of fascinating women to explore, who they were, what they accomplished despite every obstacle, 
How did they organize? And when and where did they wage their fights for equality, justice, and liberty? At a time of fighting for our rights now, women's rights serves as a bomb. If they could do it, so can we. Most importantly, it serves as rocket fuel to continue our work and achieve full rights today because we know we are far from done. Today on Women's Equality Day, we are proud to partner with the Girl Scouts and we can't wait to see what the girls will discover and contribute next. My name is Brenda Berkman and I am the Vice President for Programs for the all-volunteer organization Monumental Women. I'm honored to present Monumental Women's 2022 Moving History Forward Award to my friend, the women's movement activist, author, poet, and feminist icon, Robin Morgan. Co-founder of the Women's Media Center, along with Jane Fonda and Gloria Steinem, Robin used her weekly global podcast, Women's Media Live, to advocate for and promote the Women's Rights Pioneers Monument. She provided much needed positive publicity and a strong voice of encouragement for our vision and our work. Robin generously gave of her time and energy to provide advice and foster other supporters. Thank you, Robin Morgan, for your lifelong dedication to women's rights and for being a monumental woman yourself. I'm Robin Morgan, and I'm so grateful for this award because I find myself in the company of your other very distinguished awardees, my sisters, and especially because the award is being bestowed by other activists, which means more than I can say. You know, men are awfully good at honoring one another. They do ribbons, medals, parades, hats with feathers. They, they do marching bands. They shout and they shoot off noisy cannons and click their heels and strut about. Women tend not to list giving or receiving awards high among their accomplishments, which makes this gift even more meaningful. An award for moving history forward. Hmm. Flattering, though I don't know if any one individual can ever be said to have done that. Monuments themselves, which are partly the raison d'etre of your board, Monumental Women, have struck me in the past as ironic, doubtless because they were virtually all representations of male people, but also because of Shelley's great poem, Ozymandias, about the irony of monuments' impermanence. But you on the board have changed this for me because I understand more fully now the crucial importance of physical representation, if for no other reason than that small people, little girls, and little boys too, can gaze up at these memorials and put faces and shapes on history and find courage by doing so and find ideas. Ideas may be our only real form of permanence. Ideas can't be killed. The experiment that is the United States is an idea, one we have yet to live up to. Democracy itself is an idea, one currently severely threatened in this country. You can threaten an idea, you can dismiss it, minimalize it, distort it, but there's no way you can kill it. It springs phoenix-like from its own ashes, again and again anew. The women's movement is an idea, and it always has been. When people criticize this or that faction or schism, this inclusion or that omission, it makes me smile. Because the idea of the women's movement is so much larger than that. 
I'm now 81 years old, which is really grown up. One of age's virtues is not sweating the small stuff so much anymore. But age also makes one begin to think about one's legacy. Not a lot, mind you, because I'm still too busy writing books and organizing. At 81, though, the legacy I leave, I think possibly, is threefold. First and always, poetry. Second, my much-loved grown son and a new vision of manhood. Third, the blessed brilliant idea of the women's movement. All those do move history forward. Thank you. Thank you for this award. I'm Pam Elam, president of Monumental Women, and it's my great pleasure to present this Moving History Forward Award to the Lorraine Hansberry Initiative. It's created by a wonderful organization called The Lilies. And if you haven't heard of The Lilies, they celebrate, support, and advocate for women theater artists by promoting gender parity at all levels of theatrical production. And they created the Lorraine Hansberry Initiative not only to honor that great playwright and civil rights activist, but to continue the discussion about race, justice, and economic equality in this country. They also wanted to contribute to the growing effort to create statues and tributes to women and people of color. And they have done that. They have created a statue of Lorraine Hansberry by the great artist Alison Sayer. It was unveiled in Times Square on June 9th of this year, and it's touring the country right now. And finally, the initiative seeks to get scholarships to help alleviate the financial inequality that discourages women and non-binary playwrights of color from pursuing their craft. So congratulations to the Lorraine Hansberry Initiative, its leaders Julia Jordan and Len Nottage. Thank you not only for respecting history, but helping to move history forward. Hello, I just want to first um, say sorry that Lynn is not here. She is teaching, opening a show, and getting on a plane to join me in Minneapolis with our sculpture, To Sit a While, by Allison Saar. Just, and I also wanted to thank you so, so much for honoring us, but you really shouldn't be. We should be honoring you because the whole reason we did this is we heard about Monumental Women and the sculpture that you all were putting in Central Park and we decided to follow suit and, um, and follow your example. So thank you so much for inspiring us. This project has been probably the most important work I'll ever do in my lifetime and I've just, I can't say how much it has meant to me. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything and thank you especially to Pam for all of your guidance and help and wisdom. Thank you. I'm Heather Nestle, a board member of Monumental Women and it's my great honor to present Kinshasa Holman Caldwell with the Moving History Forward Award. Kinshasa is a museum director, an educator, an author, and an all-around amazing human being. She worked with us at Monumental Women as a jurist helping us to select our award-winning sculptor, Meredith Bergman. In addition to giving us her time and her talent, Kinshasa was an early supporter of the project, and that influence helped us to get to the finish line. Kinshasa has been moving history forward for her entire career, first at the Studio Museum here in Harlem, then at the National Museum of the American Indian, and now as the Deputy Director of the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C. She has curated and helped bring to light hundreds of diverse and influential artists and uncovered history that many of us would not know if not for her. We thank Kinshasa for her work and are proud to award her the Moving History Forward Award from Monumental Women. Thank you, Heather. And happy Women's Equality Day to all. When Pam Eon and Heather Nestle invited me to join the jury for the monument to women's suffrage in Central Park. 
I had some trepidation, not because of the worthiness of the project, it was more than worthy, but because I wanted to make sure that I got it right. Any concerns I had were swept away once I joined the process and began to work with the extraordinary panel that included Pam Colleen Jenkins, former Parks Commissioner Mitchell Silver, and an array of other panelists, including my dear friend and colleague, Dr. Harriet Senny. I learned so much as we began to delve into the extraordinary array of applications from very gifted artists. It was a tough decision, but I was delighted when we were able to recommend the sculptor Meredith Berkman. Her exquisite work of art honoring the great Sojourner Truth, Susan B. Anthony, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton was inspiring. And it will continue to inspire visitors and viewers from young girls, like the Girl Scouts of America who supported this project, to young boys, to families, and to individuals from around New York City, New York State, and around the world. Meredith's design is a wonderful evocation of the struggle and the perseverance of these women and women who with them were dedicated to ensuring the right to vote and who led the way to the passage of the 19th Amendment giving women the franchise. In my career, I have been privileged to be on a number of public art, juries, commissions, boards, panels for private and public organizations, including foundations and municipalities. But among all of those roles I've played, this role has been one of the most important and the most memorable. I will always be grateful for this opportunity to honor the struggle which connects to the struggle for abolition, for the rights of women of color, and for the rights of all people. I want to thank you for this wonderful award and for allowing me to be a small part of honoring three magnificent women who cleared the path for freedom, justice, and equality for all. Hello, my name is Eileen McDonald. I'm a director on the board of Monumental Women. I'm also a proud member of Local One of the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees and the founder and co-chair of the Local One Sisters Committee. Our union is a member of the AFL-CIO, the American Federation of Labor and Congress of Industrial Organizations. The mission of unions is to strive to ensure all working people are treated fairly, fight for social and economic justice, and that working people have a voice. The statue behind us represents one of the greatest achievements of giving someone a voice. Women of the United States finally achieve the right to vote. My personal goal with Monumental Women is to bring recognition to women in the labor movement. Workers are the backbone of our country and women now make up more than half of the labor force. I'm honored today to be presenting the Moving History Forward Award to AFL-CIO President Elizabeth Schuler, 
The first woman elected as president of the AFL-CIO since its beginnings 141 years ago. I first met Liz at the 2010 United Association of Labor Educators Union Women's Summer School. It's an annual conference that educates women on workers' rights and leadership. At the graduation ceremony, President Schuler was the keynote speaker, and her words changed my life. She inspired me to get involved and to bring forward the possibility that women can do more than live in the shadows, that we deserve to be treated with respect and dignity, and that by banding together, we can have a voice. Your words planted seeds, helping us to imagine the impossible. President Schuler has spent years advocating for all of us. She even traveled to Chicago to rededicate the Haymarket martyr's statue which portrays justice as a woman. Bringing women into public spaces is the mission of Monumental Women, and this award recognizes those outstanding efforts. President Schuler, on behalf of Monumental Women and all the women and workers whose lives you have made better, it's my absolute honor to say congratulations for breaking the glass ceiling and to present you with the Moving History Forward Award. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> that was so meaningful. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. Thank you, Eileen. That was so meaningful. And um, I was a little unprepared for that. But I um, just want to say happy Women's Equality Day. To everyone, I want to thank Monumental Women, obviously, for your incredible work. I know there are many of the members here of Monumental Women. Um, I want to thank you for this incredible honor. Um, we have uh, fellow honorees that uh, we're standing with, of course, um, the IATSE Local One Sisters Committee. Um, and I know, Eileen, your leadership has just been tremendous and for so many years. And you give voice to so many women in your industry and beyond. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, Robin Morgan, Kinshasa Holman Conwell, and the Lorraine Hansberry Initiative. So we're in good company. Yes. <laughs> I can't think of a better place to accept the Moving History Forward Award and to mark this day than in front of this incredible statue celebrating Sojourner Truth, Susan B. Anthony, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, um, whose great great granddaughter, I believe, is in the audience. and. Of course, three courageous women who were never afraid to fight for change because they understood the importance of giving everyone a chance to speak truth to power. And the idea of speaking truth to power is really at the heart of both the suffrage movement and the labor movement. And the two have an incredible shared history. And we think about at the, the turn of the last century as more women began working they began joining labor unions and that gave them the collective power to strike for better pay and protest for better treatment and safer working conditions and they saw how having a voice in their workplace made a difference and it was harriet stanton blatch the daughter of elizabeth Cady stanton who was among the first members of the suffrage movement to reach out to working women in the labor movement um, who wanted to form unions, the, the activists at that time, because she realized that they shared a common cause. And they saw that having a voice in the workplace and in elections helped them fight for better jobs and better lives. And she also recognized the tactics and experiences of, of women who organized and who were protesting for better working conditions. That would be an incredible asset to the suffrage movement. Um, and so she was right. Working women helped propel the suffrage movement to victory. So our pasts and our futures as movements are linked together. And the labor movement is a pillar of democracy today and we give people a voice in the workplace and to protect the right to vote. And so the labor movement is a place for everyone, um, for all pe working people of all backgrounds and experiences, and the suffragists knew that, and, and we see it every day. The more people you bring into your movement, the stronger it is. And courageous women are leading the way forward. I'm incredibly proud to say that we in the labor movement we have six and a half million women. We are the largest working women's organization in the country. And not many people see us that way. 
So we are organizing, we are mobilizing, we're investing in our communities, we're fighting to close the pay gap, we're fighting for good jobs and equity for all. And I just wanna say congratulations. Congratulations to my fellow awardees. And I am so proud to be working and fighting alongside you. And I just wanna say the award that you've given me, I'm thinking about all the women in the labor movement who have been leading in their workplaces and their communities, who've been leading picket lines and strikes and really fighting for economic justice for all. And so I'm standing with them to accept this award and thank you so much. So proud. Thank All you. Right. So there's a box for Yay! Yay. <laughs> Thanks for being here, everyone. I didn't realize we were going to have a crowd, so. <laughs> I was picturing just right. you and I in front of a camera. Like. I know. Charted in 1886 with 12 men, Local One is the oldest and the largest stagecraft local of the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees. Just shy of 100 years later, in 1980, the first woman achieved her Local One card. By 2011, Local One had 2,300 members with 115 women. On August 12th, the first Local One Sisters Committee meeting was held. The women of Local One had their own voice. The Sisters Committee strived to bring women into leadership roles through mentoring, networking, and civic engagement, and was the first union to endorse this groundbreaking statue of real women in Central Park. Sisters Committee founder and co-chair Eileen McDonald testified at New York City's City Hall and has continued to encourage members of all locals of the IATSE to envision bringing women into public spaces. Just know that stage hands are in the business of telling stories. Monuments tell stories too. The Women's Right Pioneer statue represents the greatest opportunity for women to have a voice as it celebrates the passage of the 19th Amendment, the right to vote. We at the Monumental Women would like to congratulate local sister committee IATSE with the Moving History Forward Award. Thank you, Regina. And thank you to Colleen Jenkins for the nomination. As founder and co-chair of the Local One Sisters Committee under the leadership of President James J. Claffey Jr. and now President Mike Wexelblatt, I want to first thank the membership of Local One. The sisters here represent some of the amazing women in our local. Since starting our committee, we have strived to honor our diversity and provide support to each other for the last 11 years. That support has branched out to the leadership, under the leadership of IATSC President Matthew D. Loeb. There are now over 56 women's committees in locals across the country and in Canada. The entire IATSC organization has brought moral support and financial support to monumental women, and we are grateful. I also want to say thank you to New York City Central Labor Council President Vincent Alvarez for your support and always bringing your enthusiasm. Thank you for being here, Vinny. Central Labor Councils are the hardworking folks that make up the AFL-CIO. And special thanks again to President Liz Schuler, AFL-CIO's first woman president. Every one of these levels have given women a voice. Monumental Women recognizes the work that the Sisters Committee and the IATSC have done with fundraising and communication around the Alliance. We will continue to support future projects. As stagehands, we work in the dark. We work backstage, behind the scenes. Honestly, if you see one of us, there's something wrong. But today, we are being seen. Today, we find our spotlight. Our heartfelt thanks to Monumental Women for honoring the Local One Sisters Committee with the Moving History Forward Award. Thank you.
My name is Ariel Deutsch and I'm a proud board member of Monumental Women. We are so excited to announce our online store where you can find great gifts for friends, colleagues and family that help support our mission to reimagine public spaces. The proceeds of every purchase go toward our Women's History Education campaign, including our Women's Rights History Trail and Put Her on a Pedestal Art Project. You can find fun and exciting items including a statue pin, tote bag and beautiful scarf. Plus, everything is union made and made in the USA. So please check out our online store and help us move history forward. Hello, I'm Dave Spaulding, treasurer of Monumental Women. It has been my sincere pleasure to be involved with and help my fellow board members marshal the funds necessary to commission, install, and endow this magnificent monument. Though it's only been two years since its unveiling, it has become a destination for girls, young women, supporters of women's rights, and a backdrop for nearly every politician running for office and political office holder when they talk about women's rights, voter rights, and the important contributions of women to society. I'm addressing you today because I have an eye toward the future about the importance of our organization and the work that we do through the programs we've developed. Particularly, the Women's Rights History Trail, the Girl Scouts Women's History Patch, and our ongoing education series. We are funding the next three years of this work through various sources, but more importantly, through contributors like you. To date, our non-institutional small givers have donated uh, an average of $96 each, and they represent 93% of all of our contributors. Though an impressive statistic, we're looking to grow that support further. Consider an ongoing monthly gift. Small amounts every month, they really add up. For those of you who have unrealized gains in your investment portfolio, you might consider our appreciated stock program. Those gifts can achieve a donation worth the fair market value without paying income tax on the gains. The tax benefits of charitable giving are numerous, with some benefits that inure even to those who don't itemize their income tax. I'd be happy to discuss those or other gift ideas with you and your tax advisor. Just reach out to me through our website. Thank you for your support. So as you're walking around the city of New York, you can simply look at your, at your phone and pull up the Women's Rights History Trail, Monumental Women's Rights History Trail. It's a virtual trail. You can figure out where you are and tap on a site and it will give you the location of that site and the woman or movement that it's connected with and it'll give you some information about that woman or the women's movement that it's connected with and you can walk from site to site. Many of them, especially in Manhattan, are within walking distance. It's a great thing to do when you're walking around in five boroughs. Just check and see, am I near a women's rights history site? And you can find it on our map. Voila, learn about women's history. What we're trying to do with Monumental Women and our education campaign is to make sure that decades from now, maybe hundreds of years from now, when people come through Central Park and they're enjoying the scenery and they see these monuments to people and they look at our Women's Rights Pioneers Monument, that our education campaign, including our talking statues and our Put Her on a Pedestal campaign and our Women's Rights History Trail will ensure that people will understand the great importance of these three women, Sojourner Truth, Susan B. Anthony, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, to the rights that we, as Americans, have today. And they will understand the hardships that they went through, the triumphs, the tragedies that their lives involved. They will not be forgotten. They will be part of history, even years and decades 
and centuries, dare I say, after this monument was put in. Happy Women's Equality Day! 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 Happy Women's Equality Day!